Hello and good morning everyone. So today now we are continuing our uh, previous lecture where we are talking about the bacterial exotoxin. So we are revising uh, USMLE step 1 2021. We are on page 132. So we are re revising, revising the microbiological section where we are talking about the exotoxin. We have previously discussed about the exotoxin and in endotoxin differences. Then we have talked about the exotoxin. There are different mechanisms by which exotoxin acts on our body and among them that we have talked about the <coughs> those who can inhibit the protein synthesis. Now there are others like that increase the fluid secretion then there were there are others like inhibit the release of neurotransmitter and further there are the certain like um, lysis the cell membrane as well as act as the super antigen. So these are the different mechanism on which exotoxin acts in our body. We have talked about previously in a previous lecture that there are certain exotoxin which acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis and among them there are the very pathogenic deadly organism like Corynebacterium diphtheri causing diphtheria that inhibits the elongation uh, inactivate the elongation factor along with that there was a Pseudomonas aeruginosa that also acts on the same by, inhibit, by inhibiting or inactivating the elongation factor then there were the other, certain other species like Sigella species, species and Enterohemorrhagic E. coli which is also known as the O157H7 so this all these two are um, have the Siga toxin and Siga light toxin which are inactivating the 60S ribosomal subunit and inhibiting the protein synthesis so on protein synthesis there are four Coronavirus diphtheri, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Sigella species, and E. coli. But that E. coli is enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which has the prototypic name as O157 at seven. O157 at seven. So we have done with the uh, bacterial exotoxin that acts by inhibiting the protein synthesis. Now let's come to the point where bacterial exotoxin that helps or that acts by increasing the fluid secretion that acts by increasing the cyclic EMP inside your cell. This is the cyclic EMP, the second messenger, by increasing the cyclic EMP that the fluids are secreted out from our body, our cells, and in this way, their mechanism action takes place. The example, those increase the fluid secretion can be remembered with this, uh, the, uh, you can say, you can remember by this, that's uh, cyclic A M and P. So then you can remember C for cholera. This is Vibrio cholerae toxin act, acts by increasing the cyclic AMP. Then there is the A that is the bacillus anthracis which also in, act, uh, acts by increasing the cyclic AMP. Then there is the M. This M, if you remember this M, sorry, you this M can be written if you tilt like, like that then this becomes your M. This is opposite M. This is the E. So E. coli also acts by increasing the cyclic AMP and then there, are, there is another people that is the Bordetella partitious which also increase, acts by increasing the cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP itself is a synonym to remember this all organism that acts by increasing the cyclic AMP and increase the fluid secretion from our body. Okay, so we are talking about okay C for cholera, A for bacillus anthracis, M for you tilt it, this becomes the E. coli, and then P for Bordella partitious. Then these all are the organisms that act by increased fluid secretion. These are the exotoxin that uh, acts by increasing the cyclic AMP and increased fluid secretion from our body. Okay, so since we have remembered the organism, then there other things are little less important because we have to know that okay cyclic AMP increased fluid secretion these are the exotoxin and we can even go in further details on that so let's now talk Let's now talk about the increased fluid secretion increasing. We have the uh, intero enterooxygenic E. coli and in that there is the heat level toxin and heat stable toxin. So we are talking about the cyclic AMP increasing uh, in which we are, we can even talk about from the Vibrio cholera. So C for cholera, so cholera toxin. Cholera toxin activates the adrenal cyclase that increase the cyclic AMP by permanently activating the GS protein. And voluminous rice watery diarrhea occurs. So what is happening over here? Once the cholera toxin in your intestine that goes and bind there, there are two subunit A and B. 
So in A and B, and in A has the B for binding, A for action. So A inter inter side your cell, B is helping as a receptor that bind there, and then A inter inter side your cell, then A acts as the action. Then when they goes inside your cell, they activate the adrenal cyclase, convert, increase the cyclic GMP. What happened? After increasing the cyclic GMP into the luminal brush border, into the intestinal brush border, this all channel, water channel, sodium and potassium channel, electrolyte channel, they open up. Once they open up, all the fluid and electrolyte will come out into the lumen and then they pass into your poop, they will pass into the stool. So this is how Vibrio Cholera, this cholera toxin act, cholera toxin acts. Then comes to the uh, internal um, CA, A for S, bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis, anthracis toxin, how does it act? This acts by mimicking the adrenal cyclase. This increases the cyclic MP and by which likely responsible for the characteristic edematous border of the black scar in the cutaneous anthrax. When you are when we talk about the anthrax, then there are the solid, the respiratory as well as the cutaneous. In cutaneous, there will be a characteristic black mark, like characteristic edematous black scar in a cutaneous anthrax. And among the side area, there will be see the edematous area. And that edematous area is due to the the water content and the, where the water content came from this is came from by increasing the cyclic mp intracellularly so inside the cell there is increased cyclic mp that pump out this uh, all this water and electrolyte outside and that becomes the edematous area so cam c we have done with the cholera we have done with the anthrax now we are talking about the m that is the e coli e coli is the two type it level toxin and it is stable toxin it level level means that is easily damage with the heat whereas the heat is stable is that's become stable to the heat now what is the difference is that heat level toxin and heat stable toxin what is the difference is that when you are having suppose the fried rice you have cooked the study of rice or you are having the in going to restaurant and there uh, the previous night uh, rice they are frying in the fry, in that situation when we increase the temperature the heat level toxin gets damaged so you are not getting suffering from or you are not getting sick due to this heat level toxin because it is already get damaged due to heat but there are some toxins that are stable to heat and since despite heating this heat is stable toxin is not damaged now if you are eating that fried rice if you are eating the pre cooked pre cooked but pre repeat heating food then what happened this heat stable toxin is still present in your food, it goes inside your stomach, it goes into the intestine, and then this activates the 1L cyclase that can increase the cyclic K A GMP that reduces the resorption of sodium and water in your gut and causes your diarrhea. So, it's just what is diarrhea? Diarrhea is loss of food, fluid, and electrolyte from your body, and this it is stable toxin is preventing all this food and electrolyte, that's water and electrolyte, to be get absorbed and it losses in your stomach. Heat stable toxin is that activates actually cyclic AMP. The difference between stable and level is it activates cyclic AMP, stable activates cyclic GMP. That is the difference. So, activate the adrenal cyclase. In science, since cyclic AMP is increased, you know there is the chloride and water pump that is present inside your cell that gets open up and then there will be the loss of chloride and secretion in the gut and water reflux that will loss in your lumen and then pass into the stool. So, that leads to the watery diarrhea, level. In here, adrenal cyclase is stable on the ground, that is one L cyclase. It's just to remember, it may be you ask, you may, may get confused, okay, heat level, so it should be cyclic AMP. How can I remember that? That is the level in the air, so adrenal cyclase, it's A4 air. Stable on ground, so G4, one L cyclase, one L cyclase. This is just a way to remember that. There is nothing uh, scientific, it's just a way to remember how we can remember the things. Because we have came to know that enterotoxigenic E. coli, which is causing the traveler's diarrhea, there are the two types of toxin, heat level toxin and heat stable toxin. In heat level toxin, we have known that it acts by increasing the cyclic KMP, that in increase the chloride and water lost from your body, but from your cell, and cause the watery diarrhea. There is another uh, toxin, which is the heat stable, that is remain even after heating. So, this acts by activating the vinyl cyclase which increase the reabsorption of the sodium chloride and water. This is a mechanism is little bit different. That actually pump out the chloride and water from body but it prevent the absorption of the chloride and sodium chloride and water from your body. So that is a, the end result is diarrhea but the mechanism is it actually actively pump out this from your body but it prevent to get absorbed. So there is two different. 
This is acting by cyclic AMP, this is acting by cyclic GMP. So, bacteria that uh, cyclic AMP includes cholera, anthrax, pertussis, and E. coli increase cyclic AMP with KIPT. This is just a way to remember. And now the last one is the in which phagocytosis ability, this ability that is a Cordadella pertussis, which is known as the pertussis toxin, that also inactivates the G subunit, that in, inactivates inhibitory G subunits, that GI. Look, this is the stimulatory GS. So, it activating GS, there is increased cyclic AMP. But this is the GI is an inhibitory one. If you inhibit the inhibitory one, then there will be the activation of the adrenal cyclase. So, there are the two ways which, by which adrenal cyclase can be activated. By activating the stimulatory point and also by inhibiting the inhibitory point. So, if you uh, activate, if you are switched on, there's a stimulatory part. What happens? The things will be get activated. Another is one is the inhibitory things that is uh, continuously suppressing our, our uh, activation of the adrenal cyclase. Once we inhibit that inhibitory sub substance, then the inhibition goes away, and again this activation of the adrenal cyclase takes place. So there are the actually four methods by which fluid secretion in, in bacterial exotoxin, mainly of enterotoxicity E. coli, bacillus anthracis, vibrio cholera, and Bordella pertussis, which can be remembered by the mimic that cyclic AMP because they all act by the cyclic AMP and C for cholera, A for anthracis, M for that E. coli, that is enterotoxicity E. coli, and P for Bordella pertussis. Only the difference is in enterotoxicity E. coli, there is the heat level and heat stable. Heat stable act by the cyclic GMP, but heat level act by the cyclic AMP. That is only the difference. We have no how to remember it. This all act by the cycle. If the cyclic AMP is increased into cytosine, that activate that all. that activates by activating the adrenal cyclase. So there will be the increase of cyclic AMP. Once cyclic AMP is increased, it increases the sodium, potassium, this electrolyte and water channel into the cell. Once they get open up, all the fluid and electrolytes are got lost. That is the way how cyclic increase of cyclic AMP acts. Now there are the another component that we need to be really, need to focus. That is the how the cyclic AMP can be activated, can be increased. There is a protein called GS and GI. GS is the stimulatory protein that activates the cyclic AMP, whereas GI is the inhibitory. So once we can activate the GS protein, as in Vibrio cholera, the cyclic AMP is increased. Another is by inactiv inactivating the inhibitory protein, inactiv inactivates the inhibitory G subunit that leads to the activation of the cyclase. So in this way, we have concluded this bacterial exotoxin that act by increased fluid secretion by, by the second messenger that is the cyclic AMP. And hope we can remember this synonym C for cholera, A for anthrax, and we can take it as opposite and make it we can tilt it and become the enterotoxicity E. coli, which is caused the travel study, and B for modella pertussis. The modella pertussis is responsible for the whooping cough that child coughs on expression and whoops on inspiration can cause 100 day cough in adults associated with the post toxic MSS. This is just, uh, there will be a whooping, the continuous cough, this is this machine gun like cough and after that there is the inspiratory whoop and then there will be a followed by the vomiting after this continuous cough episode. Thank you.